McMahon, please tell me about yourself a little bit. I'm a psychiatrist. I've been in practice over 30 years. I went to Georgetown Medical School, which was a really lovely place. And then I did my residency in psychiatry at Columbia Presbyterian. Uh, I have mainly practiced psychopharmacology, which means I specialized in figuring out what kind of medicines to use to treat people's depression or panic attacks or schizophrenia or bipolar illness or whatever the problem was. And of course, if, uh, if psychotherapy was a good idea, I have always referred people to somebody else who specializes in the psychotherapy that would be best for that person. And then uh, about six years ago, I added TMS to my repertoire because there's so many people who you don't get all the way better with uh, medication. There's a few who have practically no benefit, but there's many people that get 50%, 70% better with antidepressants, but they're never up to normal. And you try one medicine and another, and you spend a few years trying different medicines or adding in different things. There's different things we can add in to try to boost uh, the effect of an antidepressant, like a low dose of thyroid or a low dose of lithium, or uh, there's some nutritional supplements. There, there's quite a few different things one can add in. But often, you have people that they never come up to normal. And with TMS, it's a completely different treatment. It's a complete different modality. Instead of giving a chemical that has an effect on transmitters in the brain, you are stimulating the brain in various areas. You either do a, an excitatory treatment, usually on the left side, or you do an inhibitory treatment on the right side. And, and that, for some reason, causes the depression gradually to remit. We have some theories. We don't know the exact reasons for sure. At another time, I could tell you all my theories about this. But the fact is, people who have failed on medicines for several years, it looks like about 50% of them come all the way to normal in about 30 treatments with TMS. And then there's another significant proportion of them that start doing even better than they did before, but you can't say that they came all the way to normal. But this is phenomenal. Because once you've failed five medicines in five years, the odds that the next medicine is going to bring you all the way to normal is really pretty low. Now, you might use a stronger one than before. You might use an MAO inhibitor, which is usually the most powerful antidepressant. And you might get somebody better than they've been on the other ones. But the odds of bringing them to all the way to normal, where they per feel perfectly fine, it's not that great if they've been failing on things. So for us to have about 50% of people come all the way to normal is really phenomenal. And it's a major uh, revolution in psychiatry. It's also a revolution in psychiatry that this treatment is long-lasting. After the treatment, people often go six months, a year, three years without a relapse. Now, usually they're still on medicine, but now the medicine is working at 100% instead of only at 50%. And then when they do have a relapse, they uh, don't need another 30 treatments, usually a few treatments, sometimes just one or two treatments, and they're back up to normal. Sometimes they need five or ten, but almost never do they need a full course of treatment again. So you say the benefit of TMS is one, that is uh, not chemical, and you use like, like a cure without uh, drugs, mm -hmm. and second, that you can go to 100% normal. Frequently, you can go to a very high proportion of people who can get all the way to normal. And then the advantage of it not being a drug is interesting. You know, one advantage, I think, is that's why it works on such a high percentage of people, is that it's a completely different way of doing the treatment. So they've been failing on these medicines all along, 
a completely different uh, angle that you're coming at the depression, it's not so surprising that you might get a high percent of response. But the other advantage is there's less side effects. The, the antidepressants always are going to have side effects. There's always going to be some side effect burden. Hopefully you keep it low. And with uh, TMS, there's virtually no side effects. Sometimes a little headache the first few times. And uh, God forbid, uh, one out of 10,000 treatments, somebody will get a seizure. But we've never had that happen, and we're very careful about that. And it hasn't been that dangerous when it has occurred, because the people were in a treatment chair. They weren't driving a car when it happened. Uh, usually the side effects are so minimal that people just have the treatment and they go to school or they go to their job and they go about the rest of their day fine or they come get the treatment after work and then go on home and and nothing has been interfered nothing has interfered with their life except that it took up some time today in 2018 we're now 2016 november uh, not too many psychiatrists use tms why do you think the reason is well, I think, I think about this a lot, and, and I think that what, one reason is that uh, when I tell uh, a psychiatrist that uh, give me your treatment-resistant patient that has failed on medicines for years, and uh, I've got a 50% chance I'm going to bring them all the way to normal, it just sounds too good to be true. It's like an investment. You know, you say, mm -hmm. You're, we're going to... Uh, you're going to make 20% a year for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. If it's too good to be true, it must not be true. <laughs> so that's one reason. But you, they know you. You, you went on psychiatrists. You practiced over 30 years. You treat this, yeah. these tragedies for years. Yeah. Well, so, some, you know, it's hard to believe. And it's a, it sounds like an unusual treatment. You're going to have somebody put this great big magnet on their head, and that's going to stimulate their brain and and have this uh, long-acting benefit, it just, uh, it sounds a little unusual. And more and more psychiatrists are beginning to go along with this now because they've seen people that got better. And once you've seen a few people, then, then uh, you're convinced. But then it's not that simple to induce the patient to go see somebody. Many of the patients I treated have been my own patients for years. And it would have been very difficult for me to induce them to go across town and be treated by some stranger with a strange machine and spend a lot of money, it was just impossible. The first patient I treated, I partly got the machine just for him because I knew I couldn't get him to go anywhere else and he was in such terrible shape he was going to lose his job. And, uh, and thankfully he did really well and, and he didn't relapse at all for over three years. And he had never been in a normal mood until this treatment. So with my own patients, they have gradually trusted me. And then if I keep encouraging them and, and mentioning this treatment, eventually I can get them to do it. But it's a little harder to get somebody to go to somebody else they don't know. And then often you have to spend a large amount of money and although we're trying to change that, we're trying to make it less expensive and we're trying to induce the insurance companies to pay a little better. And, and in fact, Medicare now pays for it, which is really a huge advance. Um, they'll pay for 36 treatments, oh. which is usually more than enough. And apparently, uh, I've, I was told by a patient uh, today that that after six months or a year, if you need another course of treatment, Medicare will pay for another course. So uh, that's that's really good if that's true. Thank you very much, Doctor. No problem.